Banks Island in Canada's Western Arctic. Desolate, rugged, untamed. An expanse of rock and low rolling hills, more suited to caribou and muskox than human habitation. Yet this is the land a group of Innu Valuit have chosen to call home, adapting as their ancestors have done to an ever changing environment. But something is happening on Banks Island that may imperil present and future generations of islanders. Something not even skill or centuries of adaptation may overcome. The last two years, uh, by this time, we wouldn't be able to drive the skidoos on the land because there's too much ground and it's a lot warmer. This year we've had probably one week of minus 40 at the most and we used to get two, three weeks in a row and more than once and this spring it's been cold and a lot of snow and you can't tell what's going to happen. What's scary is that um, there's uncertainty because we don't know when to travel on the ice and our food sources are getting further and further away. We can't read the weather like we used to. It's changing our way of life. Sachs Harbour, the only settlement on Banks Island, is home to 120 people. Many of them descendants of nomadic hunters and trappers who came to the island centuries before European explorers ever set sail. It is a modern community, one that has learned to balance tradition with 20th century technology. But in the past decade, climatic changes have begun to upset that balance. The land and sea are in upheaval. In the last few years here, there have been people drifted out on the ice because of the winds and the currents. Uh, we really have to watch what we're doing here because uh, the ice is not as thick as it used to be. Uh, what we used to see around here is uh, some multi-year ice mixed with some of the ice that's frozen like this year. But uh, you don't see so much uh, multi-year ice around anymore. Well, when it gets warm, uh, when it cracks, it hardly frees up anymore. Yeah? And then easy to open up. When we go out, cracks all over. When we get a bearded chill, we have to skin it really fast. The ice was kind of moving, huh? Mm -hmm. Make a big, loud noise like a rifle shot one time, and the whole ice shake. Sachs Harbor is built on ground that is permanently frozen. Most of the island is covered by this permafrost. John Kiagak, a hunter and trapper, has been monitoring disturbing changes along the coast. I'd say about 87, you start noticing these uh, mudslides. Like pretty bad. Like before, it used to be a little, little uh, sloughing from the uh, from the snow left on the side of the banks, but now it's the permafrost that's coming down, and the ground being disturbed, and more the permafrost being exposed to the heat from the sun, the wind. You know, now there's more rain, and the sun is shining all the time, or warmer, warmer summers earlier springs, and once this start, I don't know what's going to stop it. I don't know the impact. It doesn't look good uh, for the community anyway. I think we'll have to evacuate the community and move somewhere else. All you notice, all the disasters all over the world, and it's happening here. There are signs of permafrost melt inland as well. Lakes are disappearing, and mudslides are transforming beaches. One lake along the coast actually drained into the ocean, carrying the freshwater fish with it. Well, we're about five miles from the community inland, and we're looking at some uh, permafrost melting. Three, four years ago, the permafrost started showing here and it just kept going from there. 
I think if that stays exposed, it's just going to keep going. And who knows how far it's going to go. I think the bigger it gets, the faster it'll go. It just started off small. And down here, you used, used to be able to walk along the beach there. And now it's all mud. You could see where the uh, wind is taking shape there. And as the wind melts it, the ground just keeps dropping. You notice it sometimes along the coast where the waves erode the uh, shoreline, but not something like this up in land. And I'm not sure if it has any effect on any of the ecosystem or the, the animals, the land. And One thing I thought about was uh, the lemmings. Um, they're the main food source for the foxes and the owls. And Like if they're in the holes and the ground slumps in or caves in or whatever, you lose all your lemmings, then you just have a chain reaction from there. No bearded seal. <laughs> it is July on Banks Island, but not the kind of July Lena and Geddes Wolke remember. There should be ice flows in the harbor, and more importantly, seals basking in the sunlight. Long ago, we used to have ice flows all, whole summer. No, how many summers? No ice like this. Feel very sad. Seal, you know, yeah. for hunting. It used to be ice right up to September. Yeah, we used to have ice flows all summer. Yeah. Soon as it's come, a little bit people go there and go and tap the ice and wait for seals and tap the ice. Now how many summers we never have ice? It's very sad. I think all the ice will start melting. This summer I was saying uh, the ice must uh, all melt, that's why no mm. more ice. <laughs> Well, if you keep melting the ice, maybe less seals every summer. It could be. Yeah, it Because could uh, be. lots of people said uh, ice melts too fast, and the mothers start leaving the babies behind, and they starve. That's what some people will say. Yeah. And we always feel happy when we see ice because the ice is bringing the seals from the north. The Arctic is a fragile place. A complex ecosystem where one small change in the delicate web can spell disaster. The ice melts and the seals disappear. Without seals, the polar bears starve. A reduction in either, and the Inuvaluit lose a vital food and economic resource, and a way of life. Documenting the changes the people have been observing might help the residents determine the extent of the problem and inform the rest of the world about what is happening in Canada's Arctic. With this in mind, the community, in partnership with the International Institute for Sustainable Development, embarked on a year-long study to collect information. Their first meeting provided a graphic illustration of just how far-reaching the changes were. Uh, in the summer, it seems to be a bit warmer now. Flies everywhere in the summer now. The ground is just hovering with them when you go out and land. They're everywhere. Last summer too, the water was a lot warmer from other years. The, the, the kids they were swimming right off the ocean there, and the uh, freeze up was a lot later last year. When I first used to work at the airport up here, they when I first reported a thunderstorm, they said you guys can't get thunderstorms. It's too cold. The Inuvialuit's traditional knowledge about our world around us, like uh, the weather, the animals, the migration patterns, the changes that we've seen, 
This is knowledge that has been accumulated over many, many centuries. It's oral uh, tradition, it's uh, scientific knowledge, it's our scientific knowledge. These types of changes, I don't know. Uh, we're usually pretty good at adapting to sort of changes, but something like this, who knows what could go on. Virtually the whole town here, you know, make their living from the land in one way or the other. And uh, it's going to affect not only Saks Harbor, but the whole north in general. I believe that the Arctic is a very, very important uh, ecosystem to the health of the rest of the planet. I guess what we can do is, you know, just try and educate and say, you know, hey, watch out, this is what's happening to us.